Hello and welcome to Veggie Patch Ideas. Today we're going to look at seedlings and more importantly the top five things you need to avoid when sowing seedlings at home. So number one, getting a start too early. Now everyone's keen uh, for the growing season to start but sowing the wrong seeds too early can lead to difficulties down the line and what I mean by difficulties is you're having far too many seedlings and we don't want that so if you if you like me and you've got a setup with grow lights and trying to mimic and expand the season we don't want to overload ourselves with far too many seedlings in February uh, we want to grow upon the seedlings every month and they'll be at different stages and easier to manage so things like our tomatoes and our chilies which are here more or less all of these uh, these were started early because they need that longer growing season aubergines all your your peppers everything they need a long growing season hence the reason we started those early uh, things like cucumbers they need less of a growing season because once they start cropping they crop really heavy uh, I've seen some people start them now I like to wait two or three weeks from now because all that happens is you'll need to start that plant off and then leave it to grow in a conservatory and then move it on to its final uh, growing area a lot later on in the season so I start that later on and it soon catches up so the other thing is like sugar snap peas people start those too early whereas really in a couple of weeks time we should be starting those out and then we have room for a couple of successions. So read the packet, do what it's recommended, or do what you feel comfortable with doing. But don't overload your seedlings too early on uh, in the growing season. So number two is starting your seedlings off on the wrong temperature. And it, it's a very common mistake when you're starting out. You just think you'll sow these seeds and they'll be fine. Uh, always good to read the seed packet and I have a good video on how to sow tomato seeds and that's definitely worth a watch if you don't really know what you're doing temperature wise uh, but basically some seeds take a higher heat to germinate and that's all you need it just to germinate and to get to break the soil and then the temperature doesn't matter as much so things like your chilies your tomatoes they definitely need heat to start them off and once they get going you can just leave them out as normal like any other seeds so if you don't if you're unsure go back and watch that video I'll try and link it on the top or put it in the description for you but read the packet if it says a certain temperature for germination or Google it then that's the temperature you want to give it if it's very cold you're up into the north of England or even abroad somewhere colder Pay attention to your seed packets, look at the germination temperature and follow along. It will save you so much hassle. Okay, moving on to number three and it's not enough light. So we're still in February and the days are, they are getting longer but not enough light to bring on some seedlings. Uh, this is why we use uh, grow lights and as you can see this is on but we are in a bright conservatory as well. We have two layers of seedlings here. And what I like to do with these is extend the daylight hours. So that being said, if it's dark at six o'clock, I'll leave the lights on for an extra four hours and they'll come off at 10. And I just want to extend the growing season of a light threshold on the plants, mimic nature and just make them think they're in a different month. Uh, we've been treated to quite a mild February here in the south of the UK. So it's quite good. They, these plants actually think that they're coming out of March. So they're getting a lot of decent growth on them. And, and that's all I do. If you want your plant to really thrive and come up, so if you want a very early harvest, keep them under the grow lights. Uh, you can leave them under 24 seven if you want. But the way I garden, I just like to extend that growing season just a little bit every day fool the seedlings into thinking it's a different time of month and 
it just gives me a better plan to, at the end of it. So that's the way I do it, four or five hours at the end of the day and the seedlings will just love you more for it. Uh, they'll just germinate and grow a lot faster. Now, number four, this is a good one. And we're all guilty of this one, by the way. Overwatering your seedlings. So, I don't know if you can tell. If your seedlings are very wet and soggy constantly, and there's not enough air movement around in the greenhouse, polytunnel, or conservatory where you're trying to start them off or in your house, what you'll find is your, your seed trays They'll get a very green algae on the top of the soil. And this is not good. And, and we try to avoid this at all costs. So you can use a spray. I don't like the sprays because the seedlings are delicate and you can knock them over. They fall over and never recover. So you can use it. A lot of people use sprays with success. Not really for me. I do if they haven't broke the ground yet. And then I'll stop using that. And then I'll move on to this. Now I'll put a link in the description. It's quite funny. It's a turkey baster. So if you have one of these in your cupboard, uh, brilliant. And don't ask me how I worked out how to use one of these. It was a happy accident. Uh, but you basically get a tub of water. So let's say if this has got water in, you suck the water up and you can go individually per cell and put the right amount of water in per cell. And I know it's getting funny about watering, but if you want the very best out of your seedlings and you want to control the water, then this is definitely for you. And then the third method I use, and this is the one I use most of the time, is just, I use a little cup like this. Uh, and this was just to fill a Vax mop machine. I don't know where you get something like this. Uh, but I'll fill it with, with water and I'll just go individually through the cells and give them just enough. Uh, so it soaks the actual cell through, not just the top, soaks it through and then I'll leave it. And I'll leave it and I'll let it almost dry out and then I'll go again. So, and that brings me sort of kind of on to the next thing that you need to do to prevent this green algae coming through on your seed tray so that's for watering don't let them sit in water you just want it nice and moist but not over watered now number five this brings me nicely on to kind of the last thing i do and this is belts and braces on bringing up seedlings and i would say the first three or four years of growing plants i never ever did this and i was always fine but I had a lot of mistakes along the way. And this is a way I've found that stops most of the mistakes from happening. And what it is, if you can see closely, all these seedlings are slightly moving. And there's a reason for that, and I'll show you. So this is a fan, and any fans will do, but basically, you just want to put a bit of movement around over your seedlings and it will it'll move the air around and it'll move the stem it'll just shake that stem and, and what that does it strengthens it up gives you a stronger seedling and then when it goes out to its final position you've got a stronger and healthier plant and also as a byproduct of blowing air over your seedlings, it dries that top layer of soil, okay? Just enough not to let that green algae settle all over it and then wreck your seedlings. So this is a great way of mimicking nature. This is what we want to do. And this is my sort of principles on gardening. Mimic what they do in nature and you won't go far wrong. And... It is just, it's like I said, you don't have to have it, but if you are getting lots of issues with overwatering green soil, then add this to your, what you do, or leave them by an open window. As long as you're not monitoring heat, you'll be fine. And that's it. And, and then as your seedlings grow on, you can get them ready for 
the final growing conditions by if it's a nice day calm sun's out maybe pop them outside start hardening them off so you can move them in and out of a house as and when and it just gets them used to that final growing position and as the months continue on more seedlings will appear as we sow more and you'll want to be moving them around so with the coming videos next we'll talk through what I do once these are ready to go or more or less ready to go in the ground as always guys thanks for watching and if you like this type of video or if you like this style of gardening uh, please think about subscribing look around the channel and there's loads and loads of content on there anything from where I got or how much these grow costs co cost to actually run heat trays we've got the lot the germination temperatures on tomatoes I'll link everything in the description and we'll see you again soon.